All right. Hey, everyone. It's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to... to ooh, I cannot mess that up completely. Mess that and drew up. But anyway, uh, welcome to the channel, everyone. Uh, it's Thursday, which means it's another live watch along. Today, we are doing Edbira Horror of the Deep, which is also known in America as Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. Pretty lazy title, but whatever. Also known in Japan as Godzilla Ebira Mothra, Big Duel in the South Seas. Pretty long, so I could see why they definitely changed the name up. But uh, yeah, we're just going to, before we jump into this, I uh, want to welcome all of you in the chat right now. Um, got some of the familiar faces in there. Justin Toner, Daquan Tate. Uh, new face here, I think, unless you've been in the chat, uh, unless you've been around for other watch-alongs, uh, Rai Guy 2015. I don't recall if I've ever seen you in the chat before, but uh, if this is your first time, welcome. If you have been here before, then welcome back. Uh, so, yeah, this movie is available on the Criterion channel if you have that. But since HBO Max is now a thing, uh, if you have that, you can watch it there because they have all the Showa Godzilla movies except for King Kong vs. Godzilla available on HBO Max. Along with Rodan and War of the Gargantuas. So you could definitely um, get that uh, on HBO Max. And first of all, a little housekeeping. Um, I'm disappointed. I don't, I'm not necessarily disappointed in you guys, because uh, I assume it's not your fault. But uh, we had 4,000 subscribers um, Tuesday during the Invasion of the Astro Monster watch along. The very next day, after all that's done, log into my channel. We are at 3,987 subscribers. So all those people that subscribed during the watch along for Invasion of the Astro Monster to get us to 4,000, lost you guys. Uh, for those of you who are, uh, who have unsubscribed and are now just watching on the uh, sidelines lurking, uh, shame on you all. And uh, hope you have the best life. <laughs> I I can't pull myself to be mean, especially in these very, very dark times. But uh, I'm I'm disappointed that that four thousand number is uh, a thing of the past. We're back right back to where we started. Um. Anyway, I don't think I need to prolong this any further, uh, except for the fact that I need water because uh, again. It's an hour and a half long movie. Uh, I'm going to uh, lose my voice if I continue talking as constantly as I am. So you guys in the chat, just get yourselves acquainted a little further and uh, I will be right back.
just giving you a heads up, guys. I am back. Um, just trying to find the camera. There we go. I should probably just find a, uh, just create an image of like technical difficulties. Please stand by. Yeah? And uh, just put that up rather than just hiding the camera from you guys. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'm back. Got my water. Without further ado, let's just hop into this movie right here. Ebira, Horror of the Deep. I'm pushing the play button right now. I apologize for the unprofessional nature of not having water ready. Um... It, right before we um, start these watch alongs. Uh. A lot of people have pointed out this out in the chat already, and um, I don't think I, I never mentioned this in my review for the movie two years ago, but this was uh, one of two Godzilla movies that was featured on Mystery Science Theater 3000. And uh, I could I could definitely see why. The other one might be a no brainer, but we'll get to that other one eventually. This is the second Godzilla movie scored by Masaru Sato, who um, I complained about his score in Godzilla Raids again, but by this point he'd established his own like sound and uh his score fits very well for the type of movie that it is it's actually one of the elements that keeps this movie from being terrible for me is the uh score by sato and just based off this film's score you could tell that it's a completely different uh, type of movie in terms of its tone huh? So the, the credits here say, it says special effects supervisor, uh, A.G. Tsuburaya. Uh, the special effects were actually helmed this time by Sadamasa Arik Arikawa, because at this point, um, Ultraman, which Tsuburaya had created, was so big on TV that um, most of his time was dedicated to that, as well as the uh, other movie that came out, uh, the other Japanese science fiction movie that came out from Toho this year, War of the Gargantuas. And also, this is the first movie directed by Jun Fukuda, or at least the first Godzilla movie. I want to say he's done some other movies beforehand. Yes, he's definitely had a career long before Epira Horror of the Deep. But this is his first foray into the Godzilla series. Has been Hotel. Um, I don't even know what that movie is. Okay, uh, full disclosure right now, um, I, it never really occurred to me that um, the main characters of this movie, or at least the main supporting characters, were teenagers. I just thought they were, um, it, just, it never occurred to me that they were teens. Uh, and Razorbike uh, says in the chat, didn't Eiji Tsuburai's health start falling around this point as well? 
Uh, I'd say so, yes. Like, because Super Riot... This is 66. And Super Riot passed away uh, 1970. Early, early 1970. Okay, I don't know what the hell kind of dancing that is. <laughs> and, and some of them are differing, are dancing like it's a completely different music that they're listening to. Okay, the uh, the kid in the yellow shirt that uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, Spiderus Prime in the chat says needs Snoopy, and that that made me laugh. Huh? Um, but anyway, the kid in the yellow shirt. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because I've started binging Thirty Rock during this entire quarantine, but he kind of reminds me. Uh, in terms of the facial expressions he's making, he kind of reminds me of Kenneth. Like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wait till this character speaks again. I'm gonna read the subtitles um, in Kenneth's voice. <laughs> It's equipped to cross the ocean. That was that was a terrible uh, Kenneth impression. There's Akira Takarada. In uh, the last Godzilla movie, he would star in as a major character. And the last one up until 1992's Godzilla vs. Mothra. Bakara. Um. Uh, Thirty Rock is really good. Uh, one of my uh, one of my really good friends. Uh, I because I'd occasionally like uh, Instagram story uh, segments of the show, whatever I'm watching. Or whenever I start a new season, and uh, one of my really good friends uh, will constantly like comment saying, "I'm so glad you're binging the show because it it really is brilliant. It's on Amazon Prime for anyone who's interested." <laughs> A uh, dude had a rifle pointed at you all last night. Huh? I think the last thing you want to do is cross him. No, Akira Takarada would show up in um, Godzilla vs. Mothra and then Godzilla Final Wars, but uh, both in 1992 and 2004 respectively. And he had a cut cameo in Gareth Edwards' Godzilla, but 
This is the last starring role that he would have in the series. Yeah, there's something about this movie, um, like, in comparison to the last four Godzilla movies we've seen, it definitely feels like it has a more Western sensibility to it. You know, is there anything to stop... Considering that Akira Takanada's character is a thief and a criminal, what's to stop him from just tossing these teens overboard? Okay, they've got to be out for several days if they suddenly just went through their... Um suddenly went through their um, big canned food stash. Yeah, uh, Kumi Mizuno w would later appear in um, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla as the Prime Minister briefly, and then in Final Wars as uh, the head of the Earth Defense Force. And she only appeared in two Godzilla movies. last uh, Tuesday's movie, Astro Monster, and then this one. So you really are a thief. You, you really are the thief we heard about. Ugh. Ugh. Toy rifle. I thought that was a real rifle. You know, I'll let someone in the chat take this. Where's that money? Huh. Well, there goes the sail, or part of the boat. The helm. Giant lobster claw. Why not? As if things couldn't get any worse.
Yeah, I yeah, I cannot stand being in a little sailboat in uh like during the middle of a storm. Well, good thing they were near land. And that the impact from the rocks didn't kill them. I mean, I... I don't recall if I've been to... Red, I, maybe I've been to Red Lobster a long time ago, but... During, uh, it'll be a long time before I even decide to go there at will in these uh, current worldly conditions. I mean, even if the money was in the briefcase still, I don't think, um, I don't think money would have done any good on a, being stranded on an island. Now, do you hate lobsters or crabs, uh, GZL 100 because, uh, they're, they're frightening or you just don't like how they taste? Because, uh, yeah, I, I, it's been a while since I've had lobster, but I think that's pretty good. Zerd plays. Welcome to the chat. Glad you could join us. Uh, sure, a, a sword just out of nowhere. I was wondering where that sword came from. Yeah, I like, I like, it's funny how the go-to response uh, to seeing a sword is uh, cannibals. Huh? Uh, you're get you're in an open semi open field. You don't need to hack your way through it. The jungle is not that thick, dude. There's Akito Hirata with another eye patch.
There's Kumi Mizuno, and uh, you could definitely, um, when it comes to like strong female representation in the Godzilla series, you could tell a clear difference uh, between how Honda, uh, what Honda considers to be strong female characters, and what Jun Fukuda considers to be strong female characters. Because Honda likes to go for the uh, more, like, meaningful uh, reasoning for, uh, meaningful reason for female characters to be strong in his films, whereas Jude Fukuda uh, likes to go for the physical meaning. Uh, nerd play it. Nerd, Nerd Play Z says, did you hear that Godzilla vs. Kong might get delayed until summer 2021? I did not, but I actually wouldn't be surprised if uh, it did. Because with the way things are going right now and the fact that there's still no trailer, uh, the best thing to do would be uh, delay the movie until 2021 and release Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Uh, in that November slot, since both movies are being distributed by Warner Brothers. There's something about Ebira's googly eyes uh, that just, um, that just kind of looks ridiculous. And also from, uh, like, going from King Kong, Mothra, and Ghidorah twice uh, <laughs> is kind of a uh, downgrade when it comes to Godzilla opponents. Okay, th yeah, th those guys were speared. He, they were just hanging on, his, uh, on the top of his claw. Those guys were speared. Yeah, again, I wouldn't be surprised if the movie got delayed. And it would be for the best if it got delayed. Even if 2021 is going to be a packed year for movies. So, um, maybe I just need to wait as the movie goes along. But did they explicitly say what... Uh, like the red bamboo does because they enslave um <laughs> they enslave uh the residents of infant island to uh do their own uh basically to be slaves but do they even say why like or what their big plan is Okay, let me try the Kenneth voice again. <clears throat> you, us, friends. Understand? Oh, it's no use. I, I can't. I'm going to stop. <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, that's not a set, and considering that Kumi Mizuno had to do a lot of this movie, uh, no, not a lot, all this movie, barefoot, uh, it's pretty committed. You know. Um, um, what's it called? A Gzilla 100. I would much rather the movie get delayed than, uh, uh, than do the worst possible thing is just, uh, dump it on HBO Max. Uh, because if you dump, if like, if you get delayed 
if the movie gets delayed, then there's a good chance it'll still go to theaters. But uh, if it doesn't get delayed uh, and this pandemic is still going on. OK, let's let's look at two ways. If the pandemic is still going on, uh, people will still be hesitant about going to theaters and it's going to bomb harder than I initially think it was going to bomb. Or it could go straight to uh, VOD and HBO Max, uh, which means no Godzilla fan would be able to see uh, this rematch on the big screen. So I would rather the movie get delayed uh, than go down those two routes. If only they just looked a little harder, they could have found him. It's another thing that's interesting that just kind of crossed my head is uh in the last movie kumi mizuno played a more um played a character that sort of felt more um how, how do i phrase this correctly more uh western like unlike um she played a role that was unlike um most of the japanese uh most of the uh female roles in other Godzilla movies. And this movie, she kind of plays that more traditional um, role that you'd see from other actresses besides Miss Namikawa. If that makes any sense at all. Because I think Ashura Honda said with um, Kumi Mizuno that one of the things that impressed her, pressed him about her in Astro Monster is that she played more of a role that you would see in American films. Um, all right, I'm just looking in the chats. Uh, do, do an old versus new for King Kong versus Godzilla and Godzilla versus Kong, like the Nostalgia Critic does. Of uh, uh, maybe, I, I don't like to really compare, uh, mo like do those comparisons of what's better, the old versus, the old one versus the new one. Um, but... When whenever Godzilla vs. Kong comes out, uh, I do have a video relating to um, I do have a video planned that's relating to the two movies. So something it will come eventually. But in terms of that, I might I might consider it. I might it's not a complete no, but I might consider it. I think uh, my main exposure to this movie originally was the stock footage from uh, All Monsters Attack. So when it came to actually watching this movie, I had no idea that Mothra was in it. And here we have, um, playing the Mothra twins, we have uh, 
another singing duo called Pear Bambi. Which, honestly, like, as great as Masada Sato's score is in this movie, um, there's nothing, like, the mu his music doesn't really fit well with Mothra. And I'm not even blaming it on uh, these two singers here. But uh, it just doesn't really fit well for Mothra. And I wonder if... Um, I wonder if the reason the Peanuts did not come back for um, this movie was because because they wouldn't be working with Honda. Like, I wonder if that's the reason. Um, wonder if that's the reason why. <laughs> There's a hand, spine, and the whole package. Something that's worth noting, um, I mentioned this in my review, and I think amongst Godzilla fans, it's a well-known fact. Uh, um, <laughs> and that, that is a, like some Looney Tune shit there. <laughs> Either Looney Tunes or Hanna-Barbera. And sure, there's just a pigeon. Um... Um, yeah, it's well known amongst Godzilla fans, but, uh, King Kong was originally going to be in this movie, uh, and it was supposed to be a collaboration between Toho and Rankin Bass because there was a King Kong animated series that Rankin Bass made, but, uh, the deal fell apart when Rankin Bass, uh, was disappointed that Ashiro Honda would not be directing it and they wanted, they wanted Honda on board, um, so the project ended up being King Kong Escapes, where Toho and Rankin Bass collaborated. Uh, so this movie, they pretty much removed Kong, put Godzilla in it, and it's essentially, wow, that is clumsy. Um, it, it, like, you could tell that outside of the few moments where Godzilla uses his atomic breath, they don't really change anything. It's literally like we replaced this monster with the other monster, but we didn't change anything else. Um, here's something I just found out. Um, one of the uh, one of the two infant island natives that got killed by Ebira in the beginning, when we get our big reveal. Uh, one of those was actually, I think, the, I think one of them was actually the uh, suit actor that played King Kong in King Ghidorah. Let's see if I get his name. Um, Shuichi Hirose. Because uh, according to um, good old Wikipedia, he's credited as an escaped slave. So he had to be one of the, the one of the two slaves that escaped but got killed by Ebira. Metal Gear, uh, that that feels more appropriate. Yeah, yeah, this whole sequence coming up where they're sneaking around a facility, that's very, very Metal Gear. But having the plant like just hiding behind a bush and just occasionally moving, that is some, that is some cartoon shit right there.
<laughs> there's some neat production design here. And the base um, that they're sneaking around right now looks pretty cool. Especially that door. Uh, actually, there is evidence, uh, nerd playsy, uh, because the original, uh, the original title for this movie when Kong was supposed to be in it was Operation Robinson Crusoe, King Kong versus Ebira. And if you go up on, um, if you, if you look more into it, uh, and tohokingdom.com has a big, uh, like section on uh, either deleted scenes or projects that never got made. This was uh, this was the idea, and there's even concept art of King Kong fighting Ebira with uh, Mothra in the background. I mean, this this art, like I look at this art, it easily could be just a fan rendition of it, but. Um, it's well documented that the film screenwriter Shinichi Segizawa, who wrote a lot of Godzilla movies, um, developed this idea. And there is one important scene, and there is one set scene in this movie that proves that King Kong was going to be in this movie, but we'll get to that portion when we get to it because it's pretty damn obvious when you watch that scene you go yeah this role was originally written for king kong A lot of the, okay, the pipes, the weird colored pipes is uh, weird. I don't know how else to phrase it. But I still think there's some pretty creative production design going on. Like, like I mean, outside of the monster stuff uh, with this and the, uh, the uh, underground portions of Planet X in the last movie, uh, the production design team really uh, did a lot. They went above and beyond when it comes to the human stuff. Huh? Razorbike knows exactly what scene I'm talking about. Huh? Um, at uh, Gizel 100, I don't know if that's a question when he's sleeping in the cave, but uh, that's actually not the scene. Huh? And I'll, I'll explain why that's not the scene when we get to it. Huh? Sure, just ignore the two scientists that are off in the distance. Oh, by the way, you all are radiated. Yeah, I'm not sure what the purpose is of having all those pipes be brightly colored and different colors of all things. Yes, uh, the uh, Gzilla point Gzilla one hundred stated it right there. Why, um, why there's evidence that um, <clears throat> that um, King Kong was supposed to be in the movie. Again, we'll get to it when we get to it. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, I... Good thing they shoot like stormtroopers. Uh, the Kenneth looking guy is caught and now... <laughs> Yeah, th this movie and uh, a lot of Jun Fukuda's Godzilla movies definitely have a more lighthearted and sillier tone. That's not to say Honda's films after the original were completely devoid of um, silliness because, I mean, King Kong vs. Godzilla is probably one of the goofiest of all the movies. But, um, but tonally... Um, you could definitely tell these movies are vastly different because this one's def. Again, Fukuda's films are more lighthearted, and not as not as serious or grounded in science like um, Honda's films are. So Godzilla's heartbeat is so powerful that you can actually hear it vibrating in the rocks. <laughs> why, why would he be dead? And Godzilla's a heavy sleeper. <laughs> Is that I think that's the uh I keep calling him the the uh, crazy mayor in Yojimbo, but I don't know how else to call him. Yeah, that's him. That's the crazy mayor. Now, that is a that is clearly a matte painting of Mothra. And the matte painting keeps changing. Or Mothra keeps changing in whatever matte painting they're using. This this the laziest Mothra has ever been. It's such a convenience for him to fall on Infant Island. 
Like, he could have flown off in any other direction, but, um, nope. Uh, I've read a few Godzilla comics. I've read uh, some of the first couple of issues, the first half of um, uh, Godzilla Rulers of Earth, uh, the one that Matt Frank did um, a lot of the artwork for. And uh, that comic, it's pretty much the closest we'll ever get to like an actual Destroy All Monsters with like all the monsters reunited in one movie or one story, I guess, since it's a comic. I want to read the. I've read bits of the second half of the the comic where, the, um, where the alien Mechagodzilla comes in. But that's about it. Here's something that a lot of fans have said about um, Kong being in, originally in this movie is that they wake Godzilla up with a bolt of lightning because in King Kong vs. Godzilla, he gets uh, more powerful through lightning. And for that, I don't see that as evidence because um, if you get shocked by lightning, that'll certainly like wake you up. Well, okay, no. No, chances are it would kill you, but if you survive, it will definitely, I mean, I, I haven't been shocked by lightning, so I wouldn't know, but, but you, it, like, it didn't really power up Godzilla as much as it, um, as much as it irritated him. And plus, if this wasn't meant to be a Godzilla movie in the first place, uh, then who's to say it would have been the same Kong from... Who's to say it would have been the same King Kong from uh, 1962? Because the one in King Kong Escapes is a different Kong that doesn't get powered up by electricity. That's a cool effect right there. Um... Like, it's a small, rather than using two, like, little, like, toy figures of a uh, pair of Bambi, it's a compositing shot where, like, they just shrunk it enough uh, to where you can't really see the seams, but you could tell that the two actresses are moving. So that's a pretty cool effect. It's funny how certain parts of this island is tropical and then other parts is just a deserted wasteland. Why don't you just go to... The well, okay... I was about to say, why don't you just go to the island now? But I don't think they want to be surprised. They don't want to get ambushed by the red bamboo. But at the same time... Oh, sorry, guys. 
uh, you're kind of in the middle of between a rock and a hard place where you either go to the island shore and ri- in, during the day and risk getting caught by the red bamboo, or you continue to stay out in the ocean until nightfall, where you sure as hell is going to get caught by a giant lobster. Notice how everything uh, bad seems to happen when a storm is brewing. You know, the way uh, that shot is um, set up where it shows the sword on top of the mountain, it kind of gives you the impression that that sword is giant when it's actually pretty microscopic compared to Godzilla, but it's enough to wake him up, apparently. And there's that giant lobster. Y'all done screwed up now. Now that was a direct hit. To be honest, like uh, uh, the idea of Godzilla fighting the devil is just kind of stupid to me. That that's just my own preference. There he is. And the movie is 30 minutes away from ending. 30 minutes until the end and Godzilla actually shows up. Yeah, they slight... This is the same suit from Astro Monster, but they slightly uh, changed it up. Changed the head, I mean. At least in some shots. I love this music. Sato's score is just so... I don't know. It's so fitting for this movie. Cookie! This is an actual scene from a movie, folks. Uh, Godzilla and Ebira playing volleyball with a giant boulder. Scratch that with two boulders. Actual scene, folks. Actual scene. I mean, the main piece of evidence that Kong was supposed to be in this movie has yet to come, but um, I, the fact that like Godzilla starts attacking Ebira by throwing rocks at him really does show that like this role was originally written for Kong because Godzilla really would have just started um Godzilla I feel like would have been much more aggressive and used his atomic breath sooner rather than right here
And also the fact that his opponent is a lobster right after, uh, as I mentioned, Ghidorah. Like, it really shows that Godzilla was not supposed to be in this movie. A new monster? Really? Godzilla's having a pretty difficult time with Ebira. Now this, these shots here, um, they were actually, I, I mean, clearly they were not actually filmed underwater because uh, Nakajima and Ebera's suit actor, um, Hiroshi Sakita would not have survived that long. And given how hard it is to play Godzilla or any other monster in a suit, uh, it would have been hell to try to do that underwater. But, uh, so, the effect was done, um, by basically filming, uh, basically on a soundstage, and they filmed the action through, through the glass of an aquarium that was filled with water, just to give the illusion that, yeah, these monsters are fighting underwater. And a lot of people complain about, um, monster fights being... Uh, taking place at night, especially when it comes to the two American Godzilla movies. But um, I've always been, I've always thought underwater fight scenes were more difficult to make out. Huh. So, who set did the red bamboo set those traps? Or there's some Ewoks living here that we don't know about that set those traps up. Hmm, so convenient. Huh. 
Huh. And there you go. Something about Godzilla's head that just looks so... He looks so high right now. Some shots he looks like the Cookie Monster. Other shots he looks high. Okay, if you ever needed evidence that... Um, King Kong was supposed to be in this movie instead of Godzilla. Um, it's this moment here. Because the one thing that everyone can associate Kong with is that he is horny. Like, he has a fascination for women. And um, that's something you never see out of Godzilla. Whereas here, um, Godzilla is very fascinated by Dio. What did you get? It's, uh, it's something, it's a trait, this is a trait you never see out of Godzilla, and it just shows that they literally um, just switched out Godzilla and Kong, but didn't change any of the rest of the script. Kind of weird how Godzilla... It's still weird that he sits on his tail. And now here comes the... The absolute worst monster on monster fight scene in the entire franchise. Like, it's just a giant condor that pops up out of nowhere. And uh, it's practically nothing but close ups. And again, it's a pathetic um, monster that. Godzilla should not be having this much trouble handling. So that was pointless. He scratches his nose.
Now this music right here, um, I could tell, still tell it's uh, Masaru Sato, but this is not, this does not sound like it belongs in this movie. I mean, I know a lot of the movie has sounded like surfer rock, but um, this music sounds like it's from a completely different movie. Which it is, actually. Um, if I am correct... Um, this is from... This bit of music here is from Akira Kurosawa's High and Low, which I have not seen myself. But uh, doing research on... Um, like, on Toho Kingdom... It's, uh, it definitely, you can tell that this is not part of, um, uh, that music was not, does not jive with the rest of this film. That was perfect timing. Now this stock, this footage would eventually play again in All Monsters Attack, and uh, the parts where you hear uh, the atomic breath, where the fighters pretty much fly into Godzilla's mouth, that um, would be replaced by a roar in All Monsters Attack. Okay, yeah, Godzilla clearly, Godzilla looks stoned as hell right there. Like, what's with Godzilla's head in this suit this time around? Wow, eagle eyes right there. He could have kicked it. He could have kicked that little uh, pole, that tower right there, but nope, just throw a rock at it. There's a Dutch angle right there. Oh, that head. Not sure why it started blowing up before Godzilla actually attacked it, but whatever.
<laughs> there's not, I mean, there's something about uh, Godzilla just, um, there's something about Godzilla just like stomping on a small base on an island that's just not as exciting or interesting as him destroying a city. Battlefield Earth would have been better with Godzilla. No, it wouldn't. Um, <laughs> uh, no, it wouldn't. Um, Battlefield Earth, um, even if Godzilla just showed up out of nowhere, it would still be the same god-awful, terrible movie that it is. Uh, just like with Jaws 4. You might put Michael Caine in that movie, but uh, Michael Caine would, did not help make that movie better. Of course, it can't be an uh, a movie set on an island without the island uh, self-destructing. Huh. Oh, two hours. That's enough time, right? No, not just a new garage, Justin Toner. He got a new house out of that movie. Um, yeah, I, I mean... That movie spawned two of my favorite quotes. Uh, one from Michael Caine. Uh, I let me see if I can get the quote um, beat for beat, uh, like an accurate quote. Um, I have never seen it, but by all accounts, it's terrible. However, I have seen the house that it built, and it is terrific. Uh, so that's my favorite, one of my favorite quotes from him, or uh, that come, came out of Jaws 4. I know this is a Godzilla watch along, but I, I brought up Jaws 4, so got to continue it. Um, and then the second quote actually came from Roy Scheider when offered a cameo for the movie. And he pretty much said, Satan himself could not get me to do Jaws part four. <laughs> and that's pretty, that's awesome. I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes to, like, actors doing a movie, it's mostly for the paycheck. And swat your boat. And that's the end of the Red Bamboo, or at least their leadership. Uh, Jaws 3D is terrible, like, but it does have that so bad it's good quality to it, unlike Jaws 4, which is so bad it's, it's unbelievable how bad it is. Um, but it's good to know that they, that Universal did a better remake of Jaws 3D uh, called Jurassic World.
because I, I didn't even notice that until uh, C. Robert Cargill pointed it out on his podcast with Brian Salisbury, Junk Food Cinema, uh, that um, uh, if you watch Jaws 3D and Jurassic World back to back, they share very similar plot threads. Again, Godzilla should not be having this much trouble with a giant crustacean. You almost got it. That was the fastest hour and 30 minutes I've ever seen. <laughs> there are these underwater shots that you can't make out at all. Okay, that's... It's hard to make him out, but that was a uh, very bizarre. I don't know. Mothra is so goddamn lazy in this movie. Yeah, this this fight scene is just not good. Like you can't even tell what's happening. And it's so awkwardly cut in between um Infant Island and the island that our main characters are on. Like, what is happening in that shot right there? Tuh! That bird just knocked Godzilla silly. This is worse than, um... This is worse than when, uh, they spent about ten minutes trying to hatch Mothra's egg in Mothra vs. Godzilla. And then the music just awkwardly stops. There she is. And with only um, six minutes to go in the movie, with only six minutes left, Mothra is finally awake. Mothra really does feel like an afterthought in this movie. I mean, I get that the natives are infant island, 
are from Infant Island, but um, no real point in having Mothra in this movie if you don't really use her. Okay, there goes one the tiny claw. There's the other one. It's all right. He'll he'll grow back those claws. Huh? Oh, that is not a good compositing shot where Mothra is like choppy in terms of her movement. Okay, that, that one shot uh, where they show Mothra in the foreground and you see her eyes, that is an awkward as hell shot. Or just the way it looked. Mothra looks there. There's no real point to having... Sorry, my voice just cracked for a second. There's no real point in having Mothra and Godzilla fight as briefly as this is. Uh, like, if this, if they had gone with the original idea and King Kong was in the movie, that makes sense because Mothra and Kong have never met. Uh, but Godzilla and Mothra helped defend the Earth against Ghidorah. So why the hell would these two be fighting? Uh, Get down. I mean, it's not like he tried to kill Mothra or anything. But it would be funny if in that shot right there where the camera pans away from the island and that miniature Godzilla, if the island just blew up right there and Godzilla's on it. That would be hilarious if Godzilla, if the island just blew up right there.
Yeah, Godzilla would survive, technically. Because he's Godzilla. Nothing could stop him. Okay, they didn't even try to flap Mothra's wings right there. It's just so, like... It's more like Mothra's gliding in that shot. <laughs> Wow, they just kind of threw in that uh, nuclear message at the end. Again, uh, you, again, a proof that Honda did not direct this because Honda would not have thrown in something like that so half-assedly. Yeah, Takarada can start a new life, assuming uh, when he gets back to Japan, the cops don't arrest him. There is an animated Mothra flying towards Infant Island. Yes, yeah, that's, uh, that is Ebera Horror of the Deep, aka Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, aka Godzilla, Ebera, Mothra, Big Duel in the South Seas. Uh, once again, I want to thank you all for uh, joining in this uh, live stream. And uh, I'm, again, I'm very disappointed that uh, Tuesday's efforts to get us to 4,000, to get me to 4,000 subscribers uh, was all for nothing. But uh, you all got a amusing and foolish dance out of me. So I hope that at least was worth it. Uh, we'll try to get, we'll try to get back up to 4,000 eventually. Yeah. Uh, I think this is, like, after rewatching this again, I think this might be Jun Fukuda's second best Godzilla movie. I think Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla is slightly better. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's fine. It's got uh, good music. It's got a different setting and tone than the last couple movies, because this is the first Godzilla movie to not be set in Japan, or at least the bulk of it. And then, uh, yeah, I, I like the music. Honestly, the music, um, back in, like, back in the college days, uh, I would go with uh, a bunch of my friends to Hurricane Harbor every summer. And Ebera Horror of the Deep soundtrack is just, it kind of gets me in the mood to be at a water park just because it has that um, tropical summer-like feeling to it, so... That's one of the reasons why I definitely love this score. Uh, so, yeah, that pretty much does it. Uh, once again, guys, uh, thank you all for joining the live stream. Uh, thank you guys for supporting the channel, even if we did not, like, officially seal the deal with me getting to 4,000 subscribers. Uh, just keep sharing the channel. Uh, keep liking the videos. I will have some reviews up this weekend for Lovebirds, which I just saw today on Netflix starring... Uh, Kumail Nanjiani and um, I forget her name from Insecure on HBO. Um, Issa Rae. Um, so that'll be up as well as the review for the long-awaited uh, movie that I uh, watched that I consider is one of the worst ever made. Uh, but if you, if any of you at all want to support the channel financially, uh, you could go over to patreon.com forward slash the real Mr. Robinson. And, uh, if we get to a select amount of patrons, uh, even if it's at the $1 tier, you all get access to exclusive watch alongs. Uh, because again, the Godzilla series and the Marvel Cinematic Universe I'm doing because of the quarantine. And this is available for all, uh, subscribers out there, even if it's not patron. If you cannot support the channel financially, then that's totally fine. Your subscriptions and support for the regular YouTube channel is uh, well worth it. So Tuesday, uh, we will be doing the next film in the series, Son of Godzilla. Again, thank you guys for joining. I hope you have a nice weekend, nice evening. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.